Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Mayuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. First of all, I've got new merch, which I'm super excited about because it's been a while. So make sure to check out the products in the merch shelf down below or in the store link in the description box. So as a lot of you know, I worked as an iOS developer in Silicon Valley for six years. And over the course of the last two to three years of my channel, I've talked a lot about why I love iOS development. And while I don't necessarily regret this career path that I took, like it afforded me a lot of great opportunities and I'm super grateful for them. And I do enjoy making iOS apps. I also think it's important to talk about the cons because after like two or three years of like hyping up iOS development, I feel like it's time for me to like talk about why I don't like it as well because nothing is ever perfect, you know? There's no perfect technology or a perfect career. So I just wanted to shed some light on that side. If you're watching this video, then maybe you're considering a career in iOS development or you're just kind of canvassing and seeing what's out there and you wanna learn the pros and cons of everything. Unfortunately, I personally can't give a lot of pros and cons for all of the other fields because iOS development is all I ever know, but I hope this helps regardless. Or maybe you're here just because you're curious, which is also super duper welcome. Thanks for watching and I hope you subscribe. And before we dive in, I wanted to say thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. If you're looking to expand your skill set and learn something new, Brilliant is the place to go. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. Their courses are all interactive, which makes it super easy to understand STEM topics. Like if you need to brush up on your algorithms, they've got a great algorithms fundamentals course. Or maybe you're taking a calculus class right now, but maybe you don't quite understand the material from class, then they've also got a calculus in a nutshell course. There's no tests or grades and you can learn things at your own pace, which makes learning all of this so much more fun. So make sure to go to brilliant.org slash Helenmayuko and start your journey today. Only the first 200 subscribers will get 20% off the annual premium subscription, so make sure to check it out. Thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring and let's get back to the video. So the first point is that not every company needs an app. If you think about all the platforms and services and websites out there, a lot of them need like a website, but not every single one of them need an iOS and Android app. And so as a result, choosing iOS development as a career path meant that kind of my choices were limited in where I could work. Granted in 2020 and the 2010s, most people wanted to make an app for their product anyways. And so it wasn't so limiting, but if you look at the number of jobs in web development, for example, compared to iOS development, the sizes are completely different. At the same time, some products are better suited for iOS apps versus websites as well. So it kind of goes both ways, but I do think that it's more universal for companies to want websites before making an app. Next is that not every company needs a lot of iOS developers. Kind of relating to the previous point, even if a company has an iOS app, they don't necessarily want to always invest a lot in mobile. And that's because the use case doesn't make sense or they haven't found one that does. I started iOS development in 2014 and throughout the whole six years, it's also just been a struggle to convince companies to just like invest in higher iOS developers too. There's always this debate of like mobile first, web first, like which one goes first if you had to prioritize something and oftentimes mobile loses out. So honestly, I've spent a fair amount of time convincing leaders, product leaders that mobile is worth investing in, even though I'm an engineer, but how else am I going to have things to work on if I don't convince people that it's an important thing to work on. It's definitely getting better over time though. More and more companies are like, yeah, no duh, we need an app for this. Or, you know, they go mobile first even just from the get go. But it's something to keep in mind, I think. Next on the list for why I don't like iOS development and which is actually probably like my biggest con is that it's really expensive to be an iOS developer. For those of you who don't know, you have to develop iOS apps and Mac apps on a Mac. Like you can't do it on Linux or Windows or anything. Which then means that in order in order to create iOS apps, you have to have a MacBook. And there's a lot of Mac products out there with varying price points, but I do feel like you need at least a MacBook Pro. You can run Xcode on any Mac, but if you run it on something like a MacBook Air, it's just gonna be really slow. I think like a 13 inch MacBook Pro has like the minimum specs of processing power in order to run everything. I mean, also like Xcode takes like almost 20 gigs of space on your computer. So it's just like, it just rules out a lot of people if Macs are that expensive and that's what you need as an entry into this field. So yeah, the financial burden is real. So it literally rules out so many people from becoming iOS developers to begin with because not everyone can afford a Mac. This is exactly why things like web development catch on much faster because anybody with any machine 
from anywhere, no matter their financial situation, can start coding. And Apple consciously chooses their price points like this. And so until they introduce like a two to $300 or even $500 Mac line, yeah, it's just gonna be extremely exclusive. So yeah, that's something that I really don't like about iOS development. The next thing is that Xcode is kind of hard to work with. Xcode, for those of you who don't know, is the official IDE for iOS development made by Apple. And so it's great because it's integrated at every level, like Apple makes the programming language, the machines, the phones, the IDE, the frameworks and everything, but it's just, it just doesn't work for me sometimes. There's actually a lot of jokes in the iOS development community about like how to coax Xcode to do what you want it to. And compared to some of the third party tools out there, it is still the best, but that doesn't make it any easier to work with sometimes. Because iOS development necessitates a compilation process. Compile times can be super duper long depending on the machine that you have. And it also gives like really cryptic, like hard to understand error messages sometimes. And you often just have to clear the cache and you have to like restart your computer and whatnot. So it's just like, it's just a part of iOS development and I wish it worked a little bit easier, but no development tool is perfect. So I guess that's just what we got. Nonetheless, it still made my list for why I don't like iOS development, so iOS development is kind of a niche technology, so I think it's actually harder to translate to other technologies that are out there. Like my impression of web developers and other developers is that it's really easy or fairly easy for them to pick up other kinds of technologies and programming languages. But because iOS development is a closed ecosystem and things do change, but not super drastically, it's just harder to like do like a career change and hop across to become a front end developer, for instance. So if you choose your road as an iOS developer, you can't kind of like choose and hop between different things. But I mean, iOS is still niche though. And I say this because the patterns used in iOS and Swift are historically very, but yeah, it just becomes harder and harder, I feel like to pick up other things. But yeah, it's still, I mean, it's just still niche. Next on the list, which is I know a really big pain that all iOS developers share, is that you can't deploy things whenever you want. Unlike web development where you can deploy like thousands of things a day and you can deploy whenever you want at any hour of the day, that's not the case for iOS development. And that's because we have something called an app store review process. Apple put this in to ensure a level of quality and safety for all the apps that they have on the app store for its users, which is great. You know, I think that's a good thing. It means that you can't like download a virus if you download an app from the app store. But for developers, it means that you have to go through a review process with Apple every single time you wanna make an update to your app. A really brief overview is that you submit a binary to Apple, they review it in about a day or two, and then they may accept or reject it. And then if it's accepted, then you can publish it. But if it's rejected, you have to do a lot of back and forth and try to fix the issue. And you have to adhere to all the app store review guidelines. So yeah, the fact that you have to like wait a day for Apple to get to your app alone just makes that whole process a lot longer. And so you have to kind of plan your releases. And it also means that if you put out a production bug out there, then oh boy, it's gonna be out there for, you know, at least half a day. So yeah, you just have to be more careful. And lastly on the list, and I don't really know how to like convey this, but I thought I should say it, is that like iOS development is like a little bit campy, which maybe all development is kind of like this, but I feel like iOS development in particular is. And I mean, I think it's because it's like Apple, you know, a lot of people revere Apple. And sometimes in the iOS development community, it's like they revere Apple so much that it feels like a religion or a cult and it's just like it's just kind of weird it's like apple is this god that changes and releases updates and stuff and you're always just like oh my god apple that's so amazing it's so great or you always criticize it for what it didn't do and it's just like chill yo it's just a company and some products there's stuff like rivalry with android and i'm just like dude like who f cares like everyone will use whatever the phone they want and yes maybe it matters in the business world but like there's no point in ios developers getting all up in arms about who's better and who's worse it's like everything exists for a reason and there's no better or worse so just like leave it it's like not a big deal okay so yeah because of this kind of like culture of ios development and the financial hurdle that you have to overcome in order to be one it's not always the most welcoming place i mean there are a ton of great resources ios developers iOS tutorials and teachers and websites and resources that are super welcoming. I can name a few and I will leave them in the description box down below. But yeah, some pockets of it are just like sort of weird. And I'm like, why? Why you gotta be like that? 
But yeah, that could probably be said for like all development and technologies out there. It's just, I mean, it's a thing in the Apple community as well. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got to hear a little bit about my personal opinion, views are really mine, of why I don't like iOS development. Do I still like it? Yes. Will I still keep doing it? Of course. But yeah, like I said, I want to make sure that you all get the full picture, that it's not this glimmering, perfect technology out there. And maybe you already knew that, but just wanted to talk from my own experience as I do on the rest of this channel. So yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe. I would love to have you as part of the family and show up in your subscriber tab. So make sure to click that button down below. One last reminder of my new merch, please tag me on social media of you sporting it and I will see you next time. Bye.